Welcome to TechPresence with Damir. In this video, we are going to learn uh, how you can create a Azure SQL database. Uh, so there is a lot more reading if you are interested to see like what type of uh, uh, this database is, uh, what it provides and all that. So I'm not going to go in details, uh, but here is a quick summary. Azure SQL database is fully managed platform as service database engine that handles most of the database management functions such as upgrading, patching, backups, and monitoring without user involvement. So if you are looking for something like that where you do not need uh, to make a patch in every month, you know, where you don't need to take the backups by yourself, uh, where you don't have to upgrade and all those kind of things. Uh, so this database uh, could be best for you. Now Azure SQL database is always running on a latest stable version of uh, SQL uh, engine. So that's the best and patched uh, OS with 99.99 availability. So that's great. And uh, pass uh, uh, this uh, uh, platform as a service uh, capabilities uh, are built into Azure SQL database, uh, enables you to focus on uh, domain specific database administration and optimization activities that are critical for your business. Uh, so think about that. Uh, I, I have a, I own a small company and I need only one uh, SQL. Uh, database for my application in case uh, if i would uh, go with the uh, uh, on premises or maybe with a larger inf infrastructure then i need uh, a vm then i need a sql server then i need operating system and all those different things but if i need only one or two databases i can go with the azure SQL database. So first of all, what you need to do, you are going to go to the portal.azure.com and uh, maybe you already have bought the subscription or you sign up for the free one. And then we are going to go and create our SQL database here. So you can search for SQL database and here is a SQL databases. So we are going to click SQL databases here and uh, right here there is a button called create. So let's hit create or you could have gone from here too. And now it's uh, giving you all different options uh, for your uh, Azure SQL database. First of all, okay, you are gonna select the subscription. In my case, uh, Azure subscription one, resource group. Uh, so I do not have any resource group. Think about a resource group is a container where you want to put uh, uh, some resources. Maybe um, you have you can have multiple resource groups in one of the resource group. Okay, my databases goes there. Uh, my one of the applications, uh, you know, uh, all related resources uh, goes there, like a blob storage. You know, if you are doing a Azure Data Factory, you want to create that in that resource group. So think about a container that uh, can hold multiple resources. So the, to how you group them you can have a multiple resource group depending upon maybe application or maybe some other criteria you want to divide them so here in my case I do not have any resource group I'm gonna call this resource group tech brothers brothers IT resource group so that's the name I'm given to this resource group. Now here you're going to select the name of the database. So in my case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to call this one tech browser IT database. And here you will be providing a server that's going to host your tech browser IT database. So, so think about this logical container or a data server where you, your, uh, if you will need to connect to your database, you will be using this server name. And uh, if you want to create another database and uh, you want to connect uh, uh, actually, if you want to create another database, and uh, you can select the same server, so uh, you can have as many as databases and uh, uh, use the same server. Now, with the, this server, uh, you will be able to uh, connect to your different uh, databases. Uh, for each of the database, uh, if you want to understand a little bit better, for each of the database, uh, you can do uh, different cores or DTUs uh, like a database or transaction uh, units. Uh, so power of uh, each database can be different, uh, you know, you can set up, uh, but you can connect uh, by using this uh, uh, server. Now, you can also have elastic pool in which uh, uh, your uh, databases will share the resources. So here we are not doing that one. So we are creating a single database and then we are going to go select a server so we can connect to our database. So it is asking me, hey, what is the name of the server? So I'm going to call it Tech Brothers. So that's all. I'm not saying IT here. And uh, it is asking, hey, what is the username? So I'm going to call it TB user and uh, provide the password. Okay. And then I'm going to provide the password. And then it's asking, hey, where, in which region you would like to have this server and then your database on top of that. So in East US is just fine. I'm going to go for that one. 
and uh, this is all good it's going to create that one um, do you want to use elastic pool i said no okay so here if you configure databases here what's going to happen uh, you have all those different options here so uh, you have general purpose uh, then uh, you know you have uh, uh, tons of other uh, hyperscale where you can uh, select different uh, things and uh, different uh, v cores and all that so it depends like in my case it's going to be just general purpose and i'm okay with the de uh, very limited resources so uh, you can uh, click here on the basics you know standards uh, uh, right here so you can have a dtus and this is a very basic one so i'm going to go with the very basic one but if you want to go more standards you have more dtus da database transaction units so think about uh, uh, processors you know like a uh, processing power memory your io like writing reading and uh, these dtus you can you can think of those all resources as uh, uh, put together and make one unit you know so if you have more dtus use uh, then it means uh, you are going to have more power for your database and uh, that powers is a processing memory you're uh, writing to the uh, storage reading to the storage and all those different things and uh, here you can increase that one so you have uh, you know different uh, um, um, uh, DTUs and uh, you can read about DTUs here. If you want to go premium and then you can go further, you can have, uh, you know, um, um, in a, a scale out enable or disable. So that's your choice. If you think like, okay, you, your uh, uh, application will use uh, this database, uh, maybe in the evenings it will use uh, a lot more and uh, in the mornings it will use uh, uh, very less. Uh, so you can have this uh, scale out enable and all that. So uh, then uh, you have V cores. So in case uh, you want to provide exact cores, so yes, uh, no, for this database, uh, provide five cores or two cores or whatever so it is going to provide that and database max size you can provide that as well so you can select all those different configuration here and the pricing comes right here the depending upon that whatever you select so if you go hyperscale you are gonna say okay i want uh, like uh, these many v cores for my this uh, and uh, then uh, it's going to keep increasing the price for you so it's your choice depending on your uh, needs you can always come and uh, choose what is best for you in my case is basic is fine but you can uh, once you create the basic you can uh, go to the standard then you can always upgrade yourself it's so not going to be a big deal so five basic so that's what it is uh, uh, you know and uh, 2 gb that's the size i'm saying like and it's per month cost is 4.99 dollars that's pretty uh, low cost and i'm fine with that i'm going to use for demo so i'm going to hit apply here and now if you guys see the low, uh, you have uh, the backup strategy redundancy. So you can um, do geo redundant, redundant backups and all that. If you are worried about like, okay, uh, my backups will be saved on different uh, places as well. And they will be secure and all. So you can select from there. So uh, I'm fine with that actually uh, with this one as well. So I don't really care uh, about my backups here. But uh, if you are worried about uh, those kind of things, uh, so you can always with, go with the geo redundant backup storage. You select the value for backup storage here and this is your backups to storage so you you are gonna you know read all those uh, so in my case i'm fine with the local so now this is all you have here if uh, you are um we are not uh, using any specific network in here like public points a private endpoints so that's what we are going to use uh, later so i will uh, go on those one so you can have a uh, you know security and uh, other things uh, you know uh, enable uh, defender for sql you want to start free trial right now you can go ahead and do it you know uh, and uh, there are tons of uh, additional uh, settings uh, that you can provide use existing data you know from the data source so database correlation you know uh, here this is important because if you want to work in a european or some uh, countries maybe in asia and you, you want to use a different uh, uh, correlation you can go with that i'm going to go with the default you know and uh, there is a uh, all those readings for your maintenance and everything so now you are all good and here you're going to go ahead and click on create and let's create that one once we create this uh, database, uh, what we are going to do, uh, I'm going to go ahead and connect to this database uh, uh, from the Azure portal and we will create a table. Now uh, we can see right here, deployment in uh, progress. And uh, meanwhile, uh, yeah, let, let, let's get this done. So you can see that uh, it says uh, Tech Brothers C server. That's uh, what it's creating right now details so we can click on all those details if we would like to take a look but 
Oh, we are not worried about those things. So now that that's done. Now next part is gonna be our database somewhere. So it's uh, working on it. It's pretty quick uh, for a small database. Is uh, you know uh, I have not seen like taking months uh, here. So probably like in 34 seconds it get completed. And uh, I had issues when uh, I had a free subscription. So uh, there was some problems. But uh, anyways, uh, once this get completed, we are gonna move forward. Okay, so you guys can see there the Tech Brothers uh, server is created. Now it's working on the creating the database. Uh, so remember that I was telling you guys like this uh, server is important. So you can use this one to connect your databases. And uh, once our server is created, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create another database because I wanna show you guys each database will use its own uh, uh, DTUs or if you want to use different V cores for each database you can do that so but you can still uh, connect to those databases by using the same server name so uh, go to the SQL databases here and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one and here I will call this one I'm gonna use the same resource group and uh, the name of the uh, database is going to be Tech Brothers uh, I will call it uh, two okay so that's the name and uh, now if you see it is shown as hey you want to be creating your database uh, and uh, use uh, this server this is already there or you would like to uh, you know create a new one so I'm gonna um, use the same one and uh, here I'm not using elastic uh, pool here I'm gonna still keep this database a standalone database so it, and whatever the resources provided to this one uh, I'm dedicating those resources to this database so if I will do elastic pool then uh, and the resources can be shared between the databases so I'm not going to do that here if you see that uh, now uh, my database uh, last time what we did uh, we created uh, with the uh, uh, very basic here uh, this this was the last time we created but now what I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead and create this uh, with the journal uh, purpose so you see that uh, my estimation cost is $380 and it is using uh, uh, v cores and all those kind of things the uh, two v core 32 GB and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and apply and uh, keep this uh, settings as it is and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create it now uh, let's create this one as well now our uh, as our server and database is ready I can go ahead and connect to it so see it is uh, already this server is already available to for us to connect so it is uh, going to use that server and then uh, create the databases on top of that so what will happen uh, now we will go here and uh, I'm gonna go to the um, uh, my resource group I can go to my home here and now once uh, I'm in on the home let's go to dashboard and in the dashboard uh, we have a resource group so sorry uh, we can now have all the resources here and uh, there we have tech resource uh, SQL server okay so that's our uh, server name now in the server name uh, we can uh, this is our server name so we can copy this one and connect to it from our SSMS and uh, this is where you're gonna see all those uh, different things like okay which databases are uh, attached to this uh, server right now we are only attached with the tech brothers uh, it that's the database uh, once the tech brothers it2 will be created that we will see right here as well so you can go to the overview and see all those uh, 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 features available here you know uh, for this uh, server and uh, then you can click on the database and uh, see our second uh, database is ready as well so we can uh, uh, go to the tech brother again I'm gonna refresh and here I'm gonna go to the databases now you're gonna see two databases but uh, look at the here pricing tier is different so this is basic if you guys remember that this was with the uh, those five basic DTUs and uh, this is 2 GB maximum storage and uh, that's a uh, use space 20 MB and all those kind of things this is actually the used ones so this is the max one right but uh, with the if you go to the other one tech was uh, two you can see that it is used in uh, two cores it is a, a totally different uh, database with the different uh, uh, pricing and power so uh, by a lot of people get confused I was also one of them uh, like hey why it's creating a server and then uh, having database and uh, is my server resources will be shared with the, these databases so the answer is no your each database has different resources and uh, they are just uh, 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 attached to this uh, server for the connectivity purposes here so and it tells like which region they belong to now uh, what I would like to do I'm gonna go ahead and uh, open uh, let's say tech brothers uh, I'm gonna be in the databases here 
go to tech browsers and here you can see that uh, you can see individual properties of that database so you can set a server firewall you can delete the database and you can if you need to restore the database uh, you know you can do that so i have done that if you want to export all the data and schema you can export that now what we are going to do here we are going to say query uh, editor so we are going to quick start and here we will provide the password you can use the uh, Active Directory authentication if you have in my case I don't have it so I'm just just gonna be using the SQL authentication here so see right there it's then cannot open server tech browsers request by login current uh, client IP this address is not allowed to uh, access the server to enable the server go to the Azure portal and uh, set for rules and uh, then you're gonna create a firewall rule and allow this uh, IP so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just uh, copy this IP this IP uh, we will go back here tech browsers okay and here you're gonna go to the uh, firewall virtual networks uh, and here a uh, couple of things you can do uh, you can allow Azure services and resources to access this server or you can add client IPs uh, so it's your choice so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, um, I'm saying hey allow any you know, Azure services and resources to access this server and I'm gonna hit save and after that I should be fine and if I need to access from um, my local like SSMS then I need to add the uh, IP so we will do that too so let's go back here and uh, we are in the databases again and now in the databases uh, we are in tech browsers I'm gonna go back to the uh, query editor and here I'm gonna provide a password So this time it should just connect fine okay so it's still not connected uh, because uh, this is the IP I'm coming from so let me do one thing because that's the IP is uh, complaining so I'm gonna go back to tech brothers I'm gonna go to the firewall which will and here there's the IP I'm gonna go ahead and create my IP okay I'm gonna provide that IP so uh, allow uh, if I'm connecting from Azure Data Factory or and all that, this is uh, going to work uh, uh, here. But uh, for specific for this specific IP, it's uh, not going to work because I'm not uh, Azure service. So that's the problem. So I'm going to go back to the databases here, and then go to Tech Brothers, and here we will go open a query, and now we should be fine. Now you see that it open a query and we can go ahead and say create um, table dbo.emp id integer name worker you know so we can uh, do all those uh, different things here but it's not really great uh, uh, like I don't think so even it will support the go statement in this one so let's see if it does okay it did so I'm gonna go insert into dbo.emp and we are gonna say values one comma Amir and uh, then it should be just to run that okay so it uh, completed now I'm gonna go and say select star from db.emp okay so we should see that next part what we are gonna do we are gonna connect uh, to our this uh, SQL server that has is, uh, that is uh, uh, hosting our uh, tech versus IT and tech versus IT2 databases uh, and from our uh, SSMS uh, and remember that I'm saying when I'm saying a ho this is a, a tech browser IT server that hosting that does not mean that this uh, resources are shared so there are no resources attached to the tech browser's uh, uh, server the resources are on individual uh, Azure SQL databases and I have shown you guys that, like one is uh, with the basic and other one is uh, with the uh, um, two cores uh, um, you know resources so what you're gonna do uh, if you are here what uh, you will do you will go to the there are these are the databases right so you are uh, you can go to either of the database or you can go to the SQL server that it shows you here so if I go to SQL server what I'm gonna see here I'm gonna see my username and I'm gonna see a uh, server name right here so I can copy this one or if I'm uh, on the database uh, if you right there and uh, there you can uh, see right there um, that's that's your server name so either way you can just copy that and then you're gonna open SSMS and I'm gonna disconnect I'm gonna this is my on-prem um, SQL server so I'm gonna go to connect database 
here I'm gonna provide that name and then uh, I'm gonna say okay so this is a our SQL authentication and I'm gonna hit connect and this is gonna connect just fine so why it connected because uh, if you guys remember that the IP it, it was asking so every time it was asking hey, this is the IP uh, it, you know that belonged to my machine that's why I already have added that and it was able to connect if I go to the tech versus database here and I can see tables and I can work the same way I work on uh, like on premises the databases uh, from the SSMS so here is our table so let me do one thing I'm gonna show you one more part right there and uh, there, that's our table so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, disconnect this one and uh, let me disconnect uh, these guys as well so we go back uh, to the portal and uh, I'm gonna go to the tech versus IT uh, and uh, go to the firewall again and I am going to delete this uh, IP and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and delete now if uh, I delete this one and uh, if you guys can see that I am only allowing Azure services and resources to access this uh, server so that means if I'm using ADF Azure Data Factory and all that I can connect to this uh, server but uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, what I'm gonna do I am going to use the same server name go to the SSMS so there's no IP or anything this SSMS is on my on-prem on my laptop so I'm gonna go to the server provide the server name here I'm gonna provide the username so what's gonna happen it's gonna give me something here so it's asking hey you want to log in with that so you it is asking you you have to provide the login information here so i'm going to choose my login here now it is in your client ip okay your uh, client ip address is uh, you know on this uh, uh, you want to add this uh, firewall rule with this name and uh, add my client IP and I'm gonna say yes because uh, remember that uh, TB user I have the permissions uh, to access to that database uh, so it is asking me hey okay fine you have the permissions but uh, you you want you have to add the rule in the firewall and this is IP that will be added so I'm gonna say okay fine do it and uh, make, connect me so it is connecting me in this case I did not go to the uh, uh, server on the portal and add uh, in the firewall manually so uh, I was logging in from the SSMS and that time it asked me and uh, that's how I added it so I'm gonna go back to the portal and I will show you guys so uh, you can see that I can access the data and everything is working just fine so I'm gonna go back to the portal remember that we have to go to the firewall and virtual networks here and you see that this is added so this entry came from our SSMS when uh, we were trying to access this uh, server uh, and uh, we wanted to access the databases right so we provided this server name and it asked me hey you do not have that entry there you would like to add that I said yes okay so that's where uh, you know this entry came from so uh, this was uh, all about uh, how you will create uh, your Azure SQL database I hope uh, so your some concept got cleared uh, if you have any question you can go ahead and ask me in the comments I will try to uh, help you out with that thank you very much for watching uh, and uh, I will see you guys uh, in next videos